This lecture is on Chapter 2, Bi Biological Beginnings. And um, the purpose of this lecture is to extend the discussion of behavior genetics uh, relative to the nature-nurture debate. Um, now, the traditional nature-nurture debate actually focused on whether genes influenced complex behavioral outcomes. Um, and the answer to that, to that question is yes. Um, but the current nature-nurture debate um, focuses on how to proceed from partitioning sources of variants to specifying concrete developmental processes. Turkheimer um, has synthesized three laws of behavioral genetics. Um, the first law is that all human behavioral traits are heritable. And the second law is the effect of being raised in the same family is smaller than the effect of genes. And the third law is a substantial portion of the variation in complex human behavioral traits is not accounted for by the effects of genes or families. The first two laws are taken literally. The, the nature side of the great nature-nurture debate wins. Um, that is meaning genes matter and families or environment do not matter. However, um, this is a massive oversimplification um, of the laws. Uh, the claim that genes are involved in all traits does not uh, preclude environmental influences. Um, individual genes and their environment, including other genes, interact to influence developmental processes. So interactivity is the primary component of this process. Subsequent environments are influenced by prior states, and these interactions influence developmental trajectories of the organism, which affect future expression of genes. So there's no uh, direct cause and effect um, in relationships uh, in developmental processes. Rather, any individual gene or environment, environmental event um, influences development only by interacting with other genes and environments. So um, maybe you have a brother or a sister um, and you're like me where you're completely the opposite of your brother or your sister. My sister is like night and I'm like day. We are complete opposites. She goes up, I go down. It's just, it's, um, it's pretty um, astounding that we are siblings and we have such, so many differences. Um, and that related to the second and third law, Plowman and Daniels um, asked the question, why are children in the same family so different from one another? Um, and basically what they proposed was that children in the same family are different because of non-shared environmental events. And those events are more potent causes of developmental outcomes than shared environmental factors. Um, so that basically means that things that happen outside of biology, outside of genes, maybe things that happened at school or things that happen in different areas are more um, significant causes of behavioral um, behavior and um, things like that. So basically, in other words, children's environments, their peers, their friends, their teachers, um, and the aspects also of parenting um, that uh, their siblings do not all share, um, that helps explain the differences between siblings. Um, the part of the family environment that siblings do not share appears to matter more than the part of the family environment that siblings do share. And Plowman and Daniels also state that the salient environment um, is almost impossible to research. Um, that environment um, that's out Non, that non-shared environment. It's almost impossible to research because it's a combination of unsystematic, idiosyncratic, and serendipitous um, events. 
each of us carries a genetic code that we inherited from our parents. Um, a fertilized human egg carries this human code. A uh, fertilized human egg cannot grow into any other species, so you'll be happy to know that um, if you know someone that's pregnant, they're not going to be having a monkey or a, a dog or a cat. Um, each of us began life as a single cell, which contained our entire genetic code. And genes are basically their units of hereditary information. They're short segments of our DNA. Genes direct cells to reproduce themselves and to assemble proteins. And proteins are basically the building blocks of cells, the regulators that direct the body's processes. The nucleus of each human cell contains chromosomes, which are thread-like structures made up of DNA. And DNA is a complex molecule that has a double helix shape like a spiral staircase is, it is what it looks like and it also contains genetic information so that's basically um, what the DNA strand would look like each human has approximately 20,500 genes the human genome, genome consists of many genes that collaborate both with each other and with non-genetic factors inside and outside the body. Genetic expression is affected by their environment. Um, this concept takes some time to master. Uh, there are numerous examples of interaction among the topics um, of, ge of genes. Um, and one of the clearest examples comes from the principles of gene expression. Um, Myers is uh, an individual that addresses the issue of um, the, the concept of interaction between genes from the standpoint of disease prevention. And he raises a few uh, key points. Um, that are abnormal proteins resulting from gene mutations or different forms of alleles unquestionably can and do cause disease. However, um, studies usually reveal that only a small percentage of diseases of disease cases are actually attributable to the presence of mutated genes. Um, inappropriate gene expression, whether or not a gene is turned on or off at the appropriate time, can be just as important to disease susceptibility. New research is demonstrating that low-level exposure to a variety of agents including environmental contaminants like um, cigarette smoke and drugs and things like that can alter gene expression. And high priority should be placed on identifying environmental agents that can disrupt um, gene expression. All body cells except the sperm and the egg have 46 chromosomes arranged in 23 pairs. Um, body cells reproduce a pro by a process called mitosis. It's during mitosis that the cell's nucleus, including the chromosomes, it duplicates itself and the cell divides. Two new cells are formed, each containing the same DNA as the original cell. Eggs and sperm are formed in a process called meiosis. Um, a cell of the testes in men or ovaries in women duplicates its chromosomes but then divides twice, thus forming four cells. Each of these has only half of the genetic material of the parent cell. By the end of meiosis, each egg or sperm has 23 unpaired chromosomes. A zygote is basically an egg and a sperm that fuse to create a single cell. In the zygote, the 23 unpaired chromosomes from the egg and sperm combine to form one set of 23 paired chromosomes. One chromosome of each pair is from the mother's egg and the other is from the father's sperm. Each parent contributes half of the offspring's genetic material. The 23rd pair of chromosomes 
um, there's a slight difference in the 23rd pair in females. The 23rd pair consists of two chromosomes called X chromosomes. And in males, the 23rd pair um, consists of an X and a Y chromosomes. So that's kind of the universal sign for female and male. The presence of a Y chromosome is what makes an individual male. Combining genes of two parents increases genetic variability in the population. Chromosomes in the zygote are not exact copies of the parents. Another source of variability comes from DNA. So a genotype um, is basically all of a person's genetic material. And a phenotype is basically observable characteristics. So phenotypes can include things like your eye color. That's why people have, um, some people have green, some people have brown colored eyes. Things like your height, how tall you are, um, how much you weigh. And also psychological characteristics like personality and intelligence. So there's dominant genes and recessive genes. Dominant genes are one gene of a pair that always exerts it effect, its effects. Um, and then there's the recessive gene, and that exerts its influence only if the two genes of a pair are both recessive. Um, this may be over, overwritten by um, a dominant gene. So a recessive gene, if there's one um, recessive gene and one dominant gene, the dominant gene is going to, um, it can be overridden, um, override the, the recessive gene. And it may be carried from generation to generation, but not expressed in the phenotype. So the recessive gene can be carried, um, let's say someone has a recessive gene for blue eyes, that, they, but they have brown eyes, but they're carrying that, um, that gene. That can be carried to the next generation and the next generation and not even be expressed. So the daughter or the child and then the grandchild and so forth may continue to have brown eyes. Um, and then five generations later, you find that the child has blue eyes when both parents do not. Then both parents might have brown eyes. Down syndrome is an abnormality that's caused by the presence of an extra copy of a chromosome. So that would be chromosome 21 has an extra copy of itself. And that um, Down syndrome ha occurs in one in every 700 births. Um, women uh, between the ages of 16 and 34 are less likely to have a child with Down syndrome, but um, Women who are younger than 16, so maybe they're 15, 14, 13, or, high, or older than 34, um, have more of a high risk of having a, a child with Down syndrome. These are some of the sex-linked um, chromosome abnormalities. Um, Kleinfelter syndrome is where individuals have an extra X chromosome um, and that happens in about one in every 1,000 live male births but many of these people may show no symptoms um, the physical traits of the syndrome become more apparent after the onset of, pu of puberty if at all so sometimes um, individuals will never know that they have Kleinfelter syndrome um, as babies and children, um, they have basically XXY uh, chromosomes, they're males, and they have weak, weaker muscles and reduced strength. Um, as they grow older, they tend to become taller than average. They may have less muscle control and coordination than other boys their age. Um, during puberty, the physical traits of the syndrome become more evident. Um, because these boys do not produce as much testosterone as other boys, um, they have a less muscular body. They tend to have less facial and body hair, and they also tend to have broader hips. 
Um, and then as they get into adolescence, um, they may have larger breasts and weaker bones, and they also have a lower energy level than other boys. Um, by adulthood, um, Kleinfelter's uh, males look similar to males without the condition at all. So although they're often taller, um, they tend to um, not express any differences. Um, in adults, uh, possible characteristics vary uh, widely and include little to no signs um, of effectiveness. Um, gynecomastia, which is um, breast enlargement, is present to some extent in about a third of affected individuals. So about 10% of um, males with this, this with this syndrome have gynecomastia and it's noticeable if it's noticeable enough they might ha choose to have a cosmetic surgery for breast reduction. Um, then we have the fragile X syndrome which results from an abnormality in the X chromosome. Um, this is more common in South American countries. Uh, it's a genetic syndrome that is the most common known single gene cause of autism and the most common inherited cause of mental retardation among boys. It results in a spectrum of intellectual disability ranging from mild to very severe and as well as physical characteristics like um, individuals might have an elongated face um, large or protruding ears, they might have large testes and behavioral characteristics like uh, stereotypic movements which is common for autistic individuals. Um, so they might um, flap their hands um, and they also might have social anxiety. Um, ind individuals with Turner syndrome, these are females that have either an X chromosome missing or part of one um, part of one X chromosome is deleted. And um, females with this uh, syndrome, their characteristics are usually that they're very short. Um, they have a short stature, and they might have swelling of their hands and feet. They have broad, a broad chest and widely spaced nipples. They'll have a low hairline, um, low set ears, um, also reproductive sterility. sterility. So um, they won't be able to have children. Um, they have rudimentary ovaries uh, and uh, they will have amenorrhea, meaning that they, have, they don't um, have a menstrual period. They also have um, increased weight or obesity and very small fingernails, um, sometimes a webbed neck also. So it's, it might look like they don't, ha they don't even have a neck because it's very webbed. Um, they'll also have poor breast development, um, ear infections, hearing loss. Um, and they also have a high waist to hip ratio so the hips are not much bigger than the waist so it almost seems like these um, individuals are very childlike and then the XYY uh, syndrome is where a male has an extra Y chromosome so this chart kinda shows you um, some of the differences between the syndromes um, you can find this chart in your book. It basically sh um, shows you the name of the syndrome, it gives you a description of what it is. It also um, talks about treatment and how often it occurs. So you can see um, the treatment for the different uh, syndromes. Uh, Down syndrome the treatment is usually surgery and early intervention is very important. Um, and that's true for a lot of disorders, including autism. Um, so um, enrollment in special learning programs is also effective. Then for Kleinfelter syndrome, 
the treatment for that is hormone therapy that can be effective. Then the treatment for fragile X syndrome is special education, um, speech and language therapy and things like that. Then for Turner syndrome, uh, hormone therapy, the same as Kleinfelter's. Um, and then for XYY syndrome, there's no not really a special treatment required. These are some of the um, gene-linked abnormalities. Phenylketonuria, or PKU, is a rare condition in which a baby is born without the ability to properly break down an amino acid. Um, PKU is, is it's basically inherited, which means it's passed down through families. Both parents must pass on the defective gene in order for the baby to have the condition. And this is called an autosomal recessive trait. Babies with PKU are missing, um, basically missing an enzyme, which is needed to break down the essential uh, amino acid called phenylalanine. The substance is found in foods that contain protein. Without the enzyme, levels of phenylalanine and two closely related substances build up in the body. These substances are harmful to the central nervous system and cause brain damage. Phenylalanine plays a role in the body's production of melanin, the pigment responsible for skin and hair color. Therefore, infants with the condition often have lighter skin, lighter hair, and also lighter eyes than brothers or sisters without the disease. Um, some, some other symptoms can also include a delayed mental and social skills, a, a head size significantly below normal, hyperactivity, jerking movements of the arms or legs, mental retardation, seizure, seizures, skin rashes, tremors, and unusual positioning of the hands. Um, sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder. It's um, a disease passed down through families in which red blood cells form an abnormal sickle or crescent shape. Red blood cells carry oxygen to the body and are normally shaped like a disc. Sickle cell anemia is caused by an abnormal type of hemoglobin called hemoglobin S. Hemoglobin is a protein inside red blood cells that carries oxygen. Hemoglobin S changes the shape of red blood cells. The red blood cells become shaped like crescents or sickles, hence the term sickle cell. The fragile sickle cell um, shaped cells um, deliver less oxygen to the body's tissues. They can also get stuck more easily in um, small red blood cells, as well as break into pieces that can interrupt healthy blood flow. Um, these problems decrease the amount of oxygen flowing to the body's tissues and even more. Some other diseases that result from genetic uh, abnormalities uh, include cystic fibrosis, diabetes, hemophilia, Huntington disease, spina bifida, and Tay-Sachs disease. And this is a chart that shows all the different um, diseases and their description, treatment, and incidence. Um, Basically, cystic fibrosis is a disease resulting in a shortened lifespan, so people with cystic fibrosis won't live as long as other people. Um, people with diabetes usually don't produce enough insulin, um, and that causes an abnormality in their metabolism of sugar. That's why if you've ever um, met someone with diabetes, they're not able to eat the same things or not supposed to eat the same things that um, other individuals eat like cake and ice cream and things like that. Um, hemophilia is um, a problem with blood clotting. So individuals with hemophilia, if they get cut, that can be a, a severe problem because their blood won't clot and then they can um, bleed out um, and basically bleed to death. People with Huntington's disease is um, basically the central nervous system deteriorates. 
and also um, it causes mental deterioration. And PKU and sickle cell we already um, spoke about. Spina bifida is a neural tube disorder that causes uh, brain and spine abnormalities. And um, individuals, uh, women who are pregnant, are advised to take their um, prenatal vitamins because it has what's known as folic acid, which is a very important vitamin that um, pregnant women should take. And that prevents their babies from having spina bifida. Um, and they're recommended to take a, a minimum of 800 milligrams of folic acid. According to the National Society of Genetic Counselors, genetic counselors are health professionals with specialized graduate degrees and experience in the areas of medical genetics and counseling. They work um, as members of a health care team, providing information and support to families who have members with birth defects or genetic disorders, and also to families who might be at risk for a variety of inherited conditions. So all the conditions that we previously listed, um, genetic counselors kind of help um, couples um, find out whether they're at risk for that, for developing, or for their um, unborn child to develop those different disorders. And, um, genetic counselors usually identify families that are at risk and investigate the problem present in the family. Um, Genetic counselors will provide support to families. They'll also serve as patient advocates. And they'll also refer individuals and families to community or state support services. Um, and there are uh, different reasons um, for a couple or individual to seek uh, genetic counseling and or genetic evaluation. Um, so that includes um, a family with his history, a family history with um, different factors like a previous child um, or family history of, of chromosome abnormalities. So if someone in the family has Down syndrome or um, some kind of gene defect like cystic fibrosis or PKU. Also, if a previous child or an, uh, someone in the family has a learning disability or a heart defect, um, those are all reasons for people to seek genetic counseling. Also, um, if any individual in the family has cancer or psychiatric disorders, um, or either parent um, could have an autosomal dominant disorder or any disorder seen in several generations. Um, or both parents could be carriers for an autosomal recessive disorder and that can be diagnosed um, by the birth of an affected child or by um, carrier screening. Um, also there's other factors like pregnancy factors. If the mother is over the age of 35, they're at greater risk um, for different um, disorders. Um, they could have uh, abnormal prenatal diagnostic tests um, results or abnormal prenatal ultrasound examinations. And then there are other factors like people of specific ethnic groups or geographic areas with higher incidences of certain disorders. Um, and those disorders with um, specific ethnic groups or geographic areas in, that usually have higher incidences are um, sickle cell disease, um, Tay-Sachs disease, and a couple of other diseases.